Legend Total War here, and today we're doing another tier list using Tier Maker, this time covering the Nurgle unit roster. Now, Nurgle has possibly one of the smallest rosters in Total War Warhammer 3. They've only got 14 units. Now, with the introduction of Regiments of Renown, there will be questions like, why haven't you covered the Regiment of Renown? Generally speaking, I don't put Regiments of Renown in these um, these tier lists because you only get one of those units. We may do a Regiment of Renown tier list later down the track when there's a bit more Regiments of Renown and compare all Regiments of Renown to each other. But right now, these are just sort of the, the units that you can produce more than one of. Now, before we get started on the actual tier list, I need to let you guys know that this video here is sponsored by Instant Gaming. If you want disgusting deals, you should check out Instant Gaming because they're Understandably, there's a bit of a lull with Total War Warhammer 3 at the moment, but if you have an interest in Warhammer, there are some really great games here for some really cheap prices. So a game that I've been playing recently in my spare time is Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2, um, which you can get for $6.82. It's only got one DLC, so it definitely won't uh, break your bank to get the, the full experience of the game. And it's kind of like a... Um, if you remember Empire at War for Star Wars, it's kind of like that where there is a grand campaign side of things where you go and conquer planets or systems, but it's mostly centered around uh, fleet battles in the Warhammer 40k universe. I'm really enjoying Battlefleet Gothic Armada. It's nowhere near as in-depth as a Total War campaign, but you know, it's keeping me busy while I'm waiting for Immortal Empires essentially. So yeah, don't forget to check out Instant Gaming, get yourself a good deal. And don't forget as well to make sure that you... Uh, Check the region that you're purchasing uh, the keys from because they are region locked and also all of the keys can run out of stock. All right, let's jump into the, um, the tier list now. So the way I've structured this is a bit different because Nurgle's roster is very bad, right? Um, so instead of being S, A, B, C, D, there's just different tiers of shit because Nurgle is shit for the shit god. I mean... This one here literally shits diarrhea all over their uh, their enemies during the battle. So anyway, so we got holy shit, a bit of shit, shit, pretty shit, and then complete shit. All right, starting with the infantry, let's go. So nurglings. Now nurglings are really weak units, but they're super cheap and they're easy to mass produce. If you lose a Nurgling, it doesn't matter. So from a strategic point of view, this is actually a really good unit. So I'm going to put this under a bit shit. Um, this is definitely a go-to filler for your units in your army. It's what you're going to have the most amount of supply of. And losing it just doesn't matter. So the low quality of the unit. And plus you can boost them a lot, especially with Kugath. It is technically possible to do the entire campaign as Nurgle with just Nurglings. So I think it belongs in the sort of A-ish tier. Then we've got the Plague Bearers here. Now, the problem with Plague Bearers is that they are like pretty much double the price of a Nurgling unit, but they're super slow. At least Nurglings are kind of fast for a Nurgle unit. So... I don't think that these units here are particularly good. They're definitely not a go-to unit. The only time I would really want to use them is when defending cities, which that's they're, they're good at because they don't need to move in that situation uh, unless they're getting attacked by missile units, in which case they just can't catch them. They used to have a speed of 23, but now they've been buffed to have 27 speed, which is still like slower than your average dwarf, which is very bloody slow. So I'm going to put these guys here under pretty shit because they're bad, but they're nowhere near as bad as... Nurgle's worst units. Then we've got the Exalted Plague Bearers. Now these ones here, they're actually pretty good. I'm going to put them under the A Bit Shit tier because they've got a missile attack. They're a lot more expensive, but that missile attack allows them to be able to deal with uh, large single entities. This is probably Nurgle's best unit for dealing with, um, well, the best sort of early-ish game unit for dealing with things like uh, you know, giant sized units because of the missile attack which is fairly accurate they don't have a lot of ammunition but it is a big value increase over the regular plague bearer okay then you've got the forsaken of nurgle which this is a pretty standard unit it's relatively quick um well armored it's not a demon so it doesn't have physical resistance uh, forsaken of nurgle are pretty good if you want to have melee infantry in your army my recommendation is don't get the um don't get the Plague Bearers, get the Forsaken of Nurgle. I'm going to put them under the just shit tier, because they're not great, don't get me wrong, they're not great, but they are definitely better in terms of their utility. Because if you're going up against um, 
since, for example, you're going to need to be able to catch blue horrors, these guys here can catch blue horrors, right? They can't. They're just going to get annihilated by, by blue horrors. And also, their armor protects them against um, the horrors. Because Cinch is the very much hard counter to Nurgle. And it's entirely up to you how you want to play your campaign. But it's likely you'll go head-to-head -head with Nurgle at some point. You, uh, so with Cinch in your campaign. Then you've got the Furies. Now, generally speaking, Furies are trash, right? But because Nurgle's entire roster is trash... And these, these Furies are no different, really, from any other. They're, they're actually kind of okay. So I'm going to just put these under the sort of B tier here. They're your fast unit that you can use to pin down something, but don't expect them to do a lot of damage um, because they're just a bit of a squishy unit. They're probably going to get wiped out fairly early. They're also fairly good for taking out towers uh, in Siege Battles, which you probably need. So maybe, maybe even belong in... No, no, no. Just B tier there. Okay, you can definitely do without them, but they're just a, just a staple, I guess. It's up to you how much you want to use of them. Then we've got the Plague Toads. All right, now here, this is your early game option for speed. But in my opinion, Plague Toads suck. They completely suck. I'm going to put it under pretty shit because... Their speed is 59, right? So they're slower than your average cavalry. They're terrible in combat, and they're big. Uh, so they're very easy to shoot. So in your settlement defenses or attacks, um, if the enemy have any kind of missile attack, they usually aim for the, uh, the Plague Toads. Um, they just get annihilated really quickly. Now, if you go up against something and they don't shoot the Plague Toads, then the Plague Toads can do a lot of damage. Um, but I have found personally that they're a derpy unit um they don't do much charge they don't really push through units very well they don't have very good mass um they're just not a great utility unit uh for the price point that they are um for a fastish unit i just think there are better options now you've got the um the uh, the, the toads that are actually ridden by by someone what are they called pox riders i think um these guys here, they're just a stat boost. Their utility is exactly the same. Um, they've just got a... a, um, a, a oh, What's it called? A, God, I don't remember the... Uh, the the Plague Bearer riding it. Um, but it's just a stat boost, which... In terms of util like utility is one of the most important things with any unit. It's ability to do things on the battlefield, not just stat improvements. So you pay more for the unit and you get more stats, right? But its utility is exactly the same. Same speed, same utility, same problems. It's going under pretty shit. Definitely not complete shit, but it's not a very good unit compared to other factions types of, you know, cavalry or monstrous um, infantry even. They're just not good troops. Then you've got the Beast of Nurgle. And this one here is holy shit. You can make this one do a lot of work for you. It's a very good unit. It regenerates passively. It's not stupidly slow. It's definitely slow, but it's not stupidly slow. Um, they're good in combat. They can be boosted a fair bit. This is a unit that you can rely on. Um, so quite a high quality unit there within the the shit that is the uh, the Nurgle uh, roster. So you can make the, uh, the Beast of Nurgle work. I actually quite like them. Then we have the Rotflies. Rotflies are complete shit. All right, for a flying monster unit, Rotflies are the worst, right? Because, like, I'm not talking about mounts, by the way. So with your Plague Riddance, a Rotfly as a mount is actually pretty useful just because it gives them so much extra speed. Um, but for these units here, this one doesn't have any missile attack. Only the uh, the Plague Drones um, Death Heads have that. But yeah, these have so many problems. One thing, they're terrible in combat. They're terrible at harassing things. They're, they're mainly, their main use is an expensive version of the Furies. Just use Furies otherwise. They're big, so they're easy to shoot. Um, for a flying unit, they're actually slow. Um, they've only got 90 speed. Most flying units have much higher speed than that. Their speed is equivalent to dragons, which dragons are slow, kind of, um, relative to their size. So they're easy to shoot down. When they go into melee, they're... They don't do a lot of damage, really. They need a lot of support, and they have extremely low mass, so it's very difficult to um, pull out of a fight that you regret. Once you've committed a, a uh, Rotfly to combat, it's basically stuck there until it either wins or loses. These are awful units. One of its uh, 
only real saving grace is that they're fairly good at taking out towers, but once again, use a cheaper Chaos Fury. That's a faster, more versatile unit, and that's cheaper as well. Then you've got the Plague Drones here. This is the exact same problem with the uh, Plague Toads here, where you've got a unit that has the exact same utility. It's just a melee flying unit, has the same speed, but you've just got somebody riding it, and they've just got improved stats. But it doesn't change the problem that it's still not good in melee, really, for its price point. They're still kind of slow for a flying unit, and they are... Um, they just get stuck in melee, so they're they're very iffy units. You have to give them a lot of support. So you've just got better options in your army, I think. And then you've got the Plague Drones Death Heads. Now this one here at least has a missile attack, so I'm gonna give this one a little bit more credit. But it doesn't have that much ammunition on it, so I'm gonna put this one here just under shit. But the missile attack is definitely its saving grace, but not by very much. But if you're going to go with a flying monster unit, this one here is the way, uh, not these two, because yeah, you can do a lot more them with them. They have the same melee combat stats as this one, it just comes down to 10 ammunition and a decent missile attack, you know, you, you can do a little bit with it. Um, we had that uh, Doomstack sent in a little while ago, and it was okay, um, but this one here was way better. Then you've got the uh, Chaos Spawn. Alright, Chaos Spawn are pretty shit. Normally I'd put Chaos Spawn under like complete shit, but uh, this one's going under pretty shit because um, relative, these ones here are worse. So here's the problem with Chaos Spawn. Um, them being unbreakable is definitely useful for, um, for a demonic army, right? Because that way they don't ever disintegrate. But they're big, they're slow, and the damage that they dish out isn't really relative to their cost. They're a little bit weak compared to... Um, to other sort of monster units, but it really comes down to their animations. There are monstrous infantry in the game, such as Minotaurs, right, where they might have comparable stats, and this is where a lot of people go wrong. They just look at numbers, be like, oh, this one here has 50 melee attack, this one here has 40 melee attack, I'm going to recruit the 50 melee attack. But they don't take animations into consideration, right? The, um, the Chaos Spawn of Nurgle animation, well, all the Chaos Spawn animations were the same, really. But the Chaos Spawn of Nurgle's um, animation is really uh, like static. They stand pretty much still when they fight, meaning that it's very easy to hit them. They don't jump around, disrupt the enemy units. That's what Minotaurs do. Minotaurs get crazy into a fight and just tear everything up. And what that does is when they're in an infantry fight is that they stun lock the units around them. They don't get a chance to fight back. Against Chaos Spawn, they just twirl their arms around a lot. Their animations are not good. And so it comes down to whose stats are stronger, which is usually the enemy's forces. So a lot of the times with a lot of these units, it comes down to utility and animations can make all the difference in how much you can use them. But even cycle charge and chaos spawn, you're just not going to get that much value out of it compared to other units. And them being big just makes them easy to shoot and they don't have any armor. They're, they're very easy to take out. All right, now we're talking about the soul grinder of Nurgle. This one here is excellent it is a holy shit unit really really excellent uh unit the soul grinder it's fast it's one of the fastest units in the um the nurgle roster it's got 75 speed you know comparable to a flying unit that has 90 speed that's pretty damn good that can outrun some slow cavalry but it is also a mortar type um, artillery piece. So you shouldn't be using this to take out single entities, but if you watched my video a little while back on the, the Soul Grinders of Nurgle, they are so good at taking out infantry. The only problem is that they, they don't have that much ammunition, so you really want to aim for the biggest blob that you can and just try to get as many kills as possible. But once they've run out of am ammunition, you can send them into melee and they do a really good job. They can take out single entities. And um, being a single entity themselves, they get the most benefit from fleshy abundance and that kind of healing. Whereas multi-entity units, they when their units die, even though you can heal the ones that exist, that still exist, you can't revive dead units. Whereas this one here can be brought down to like 5% health and then healed all the way back up to nearly 100%. Because only you can only heal 75% of your max health in any given battle. So single entities, generally speaking, will be a lot higher value within Nurgle because of the the Nurgle magic, uh, fleshy abundance, 
really benefits single entities. So that's, you know, that's why they got the top. Now, there is an exception to this rule, and that's with the um, Great Unclean one. Now, I've had to spend some time uh, looking at the Great Unclean one again because of the update, because their spells are now bound. Now, prior to the patch, I probably would have put the Great Unclean ones actually at pretty shit, because they were... Um, I'm not going to leave it there, just putting it there for now. This is, this is pre-patch, um, because they... Their spell casting cost winds of magic, you know, of a limited winds of magic pool. You should use your heroes, you just get better use out of them. Um, they're very slow for a big monster unit. They, they have the same problem as giants, right? Where they're very easy to shoot. They might have a lot of hit points, but those hit points don't matter much, even against low tier archers, because they're just super easy to kill. Of the four greater demons of the four greater, uh, four, um, mono gods, I would have to say that, um, Great Unclean Ones are easily the weakest because of their lack of speed. All of the other ones run circles around these dudes, and there's, they just don't have enough utility. However, now that their spells are bound, um, which means you get one use out of them each without costing Winds of Magic, that does provide a lot more value because some of the Law of Nurgle Magics are very powerful, but also very expensive. So if they're bound spells and don't cost you Winds of Magic, and you've got a few of these guys, it could be very useful to pop down a, a you, you know, come in the, some of those um, f free fleshy abundance. You can't overcast them, or the, um, or the Blight Boil spells. Some of that stuff can be very useful. So now that they have bound spells, I'm actually going to put it under a bit shit. I don't really recommend spamming them, but putting a couple of these guys in your army now is actually quite viable. So they got a significant boost just from that one thing, but you still got to be very careful about them with uh, them around missile units. They will absolutely shred these big fatsos. Anyway, that's the Nurgle uh, unit tier roster. So it's pretty spread out between you know, the, the good units and bad units, um, mostly around their their sort of quote-unquote fast uh, cavalry type units, I find are their underperformers, um, and their single entity monsters are definitely the, the highest performers, and they've got some decent melee infantry, like you can really rely on the Nurglings quite a bit. Anyway, that there is the tier list for uh, Nurgle, let me know in the comments below what you think, and don't forget to check out Instant Gaming, appreciate you guys, hope you're enjoying yourself, Appreciate you, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.